When you don't have a vision for your life, you'll get sucked into everyone else's. So the mindset that my limits and my priorities matter is a must have if you want to say no without feeling guilty. Patrice Washington, and this is the Redefining Wealth Podcast, where authenticity leads to alignment and abundance. Join us each week as we peel back the layers on what wealth truly means and dive into conversations that inspire, connect, and empower you to live your richest life. Get ready to challenge the status quo. It's time to redefine wealth for yourself. Welcome back to another episode of Redefining Wealth. This is the space that you come to each and every week to learn more about what it means to chase purpose, not money, and also to understand that wealth is so much more than money and material possessions. But wealth's original definition was the condition of well-being and happiness. And this month is all about the people pillar. If you're not sure what the six pillars of wealth are, I really want to encourage you to go to patricewashington.com click on start here and you can get kind of a cheat sheet around what the six pillars of wealth are. But for those of you that are in the know, then you know that this month is all about people pillar and our theme for the month in the Redefining Wealth app and Institute is stop people pleasing. Stop people pleasing. You need to be well in your relationships if you are going to build wealth, period, point blank. The relationships in our lives truly matter. And I know I promised you the guide, right? So we have a guide for anyone who needs to make some progress in the people-pleasing area over in the Redefining Wealth app. You can download that on any iOS or Android device. But if you are in the Institute, then I have your bonus date ready for you. So I promised you during Nick Pollard's episode that I would do a bonus session, how to say no practice session full of my scripts and then an opportunity to practice with other partners in the Institute for Redefining Wealth. I got my calendar together, y'all. It's Thursday, February 22nd. So if you're already in the Institute, you're in luck. Mark your calendars, come in RSVP. You know how to do that in the Institute on our events calendar. And if you're not, this is a great time to join the Institute. You can find out more at redefiningwealth.institute. So I really want to get into this episode, how to say no without feeling guilty, because so many times in our coaching sessions in particular, I hear from women who just struggle with the idea of setting boundaries, not understanding that boundaries are not about keeping people out. It is about keeping peace in, and it's about just having standards for your life. That is your right. So we're going to dive into that as soon as we get through the affirmation of the week. This week's affirmation is, it feels good to say no to things that don't align. It feels empowering to confidently say no to things that do not align with my authentic self. I acknowledge that my time and energy are valuable. And by declining what doesn't resonate, I make room for what truly matters. Saying no is an act of self-care, a powerful affirmation of my priorities and boundaries. Each refusal is a step towards a more purposeful and fulfilling life. As I embrace the liberation that comes with saying no, I welcome the opportunities and experiences that align harmoniously with my new journey. Declare with me today, it feels good to say no to things that don't align. Okay, so how do we say no without the guilt? I want to share with you today some of the mindset shifts and standards that I've developed for myself, but also just in supporting my clients uh, throughout the years. And these are the things I would distill it down to that I really think are going to help, right? Because what I have learned is it's not on other people to enforce our boundaries. It's on us. But many of us are just too attached to people pleasing and having them agree with our no. And the reality is 
many people have benefited from you having no boundaries. So now that you decide to start setting some standards, you're in the Institute, you're in one of my programs, and we are talking about saying no in order to honor the things that you truly want to do and the things that are going to move you towards the vision and dream on your heart. There's going to be a lot of people who are not okay with your no. That's not your business. And so it's so important that you adapt some of these things. I hope you take one or all and that they bless you. So here's the first one. Saying no is not mean unless you say it meanly. Let me say that again. Saying no is not mean unless you just choose to say it meanly. You can say no and leave people with their dignity. And this is why I chose to write the affirmation around it feels good to say no to things that don't align. You're making it be a bad thing and it's not a bad thing. Now, I have learned that people will be offended with your clarity. Some people find clarity offensive and that's okay. But as long as it really reflects what you need, want and desire in this season, that's okay too. And so you can maintain a polite and a respectful tone, right? But you can also do that and be firm in your decision. So one of the things that we're going to practice in that bonus session in the Institute is being firm without sounding apologetic unless it's genuinely necessary, right? But you can be firm. You can express your decision using I statements so that you make it about your own needs rather than blaming them or making it about them. So for example, I wouldn't tell someone you're asking too much. What I would say is I can't commit to this right now. I don't have the bandwidth for this right now. This is not a part of my plans or what I, you know, set out to do in this season. Not you're asking too much. You're always begging. You're always this. Don't do that, right? (laughs) Because then that makes the no sound mean. You also don't really have to say, I'm enforcing my boundaries. You can have standards and adhere to your standards just by being clear and direct. One of the reasons that we struggle with this is because we don't have scripts. That's one of my points later, but we don't have scripts and we're not able to clearly communicate our decision without trying to attach all of these unnecessary explanations. And then we get lost in the justifying and the over explaining. And then we sound like we're lying. And then we sound like we're just making stuff up. You don't have to do all of that. You are an adult. You have goals, dreams, desires, You have a purpose for your life. You were created on purpose, with purpose, for purpose. And if in this season, you have to say no to more things in order to execute your purpose in this world, there is nothing wrong with that. The only person who would be upset with that is someone who wants you to only be thinking about their purpose. They want you to only be thinking about their goals, dreams, visions, motivations. And that's not fair. That's not a balanced relationship. Right. So, yes, because you've probably been in the habit of saying yes to people over and over again, even when you didn't want to do it, just because you found clarity, you have to understand that you don't have to be mean in your delivery of that clarity. You don't have to be mean in your delivery of that clarity. If you are, that's a choice. So as you're learning to give voice to things, remember that giving voice doesn't have to be ugly, nasty, mean-spirited. It doesn't have to be any of those things. You can be direct, calm, and clear, and that can be effective. Here's another thing. Your own limits and priorities matter. I would say that's point number two. Your limits, your bandwidth, your priorities matter. So when you start feeling guilty, You have to remind yourself of your own priorities. This is why it's so important to have vision. We just finished up at the end of January, committed to the vision. And even before that, I did a live about three ways to get clear on your vision. You can still catch it on YouTube. If you go to my YouTube page or maybe it's still up on Instagram, go check out that live. Three ways to get clear on your vision. Once you are clear on your vision, what you are called to do, who you are compelled to serve, what the dream looks like for you in this season, you have a right to really lock in on that, to commit to that, to prioritize and orient your calendar, your actions, your life, your environment around that. You don't have to apologize to anyone for having a vision. 
because I believe the desire of your heart was placed there by the God that created you. And ultimately, in my opinion, God is the source and every other person that you have encountered, family, friend, or foe, they are a resource. They are a part of your life to help teach you a lesson or to give you a blessing or to support you, encourage you, or really test you to see what your limits are. But ultimately, they're not your source. And you have a right to prioritize the assignment that your source has given you. So enforcing your boundaries in this season will help you make decisions that are aligned with what that assignment is. Now, I don't know about you, but as a parent, when I give my daughter a task, I don't care who else comes along with other things that they want her to do. My task is the priority. If I say, Reagan, I need you to clean your room, I don't care if my brother calls and has a whole hoopla about wanting her to stop and do something else. She can do that when she's done with my task. If a neighbor comes and rings a doorbell, I really don't care if they're having like an emergency. (laughs) It depends, right? I'm not going to go that far, but it depends on what it is. But ultimately, my task is paramount. What I've assigned her to do is paramount. Most other things can wait. And it's not that they're not important, but I won't allow her to make them urgent because she has to prioritize what I'm telling her to do because I helped create her. (laughs) Now, let me say this. For some of you, your struggle is saying no to your parents. And this was a very loose example. In this example, I'm really talking about if God has assigned you to do something, that needs to be your number one focus in this season. Even if you have a parent, a pastor, someone who comes along, you still have to learn to reject any assignment from them that's not in alignment with what God has assigned you to do. Ultimately, that's the filter. This is why the faith pillar is so important. So you can constantly be connected to your source, whoever you deem that to be, whatever you deem that to be, and what that source is compelling you to do with your life right now. So having your own vision is important. When you don't have a vision for your life, you'll get sucked into everyone else's. And so the mindset that my limits and my priorities matter is a must have if you want to say no without feeling guilty. The third tip I want to give you, someone else's lack of planning is not your emergency. You have to learn to value your time and energy. If you've been around me for a while, you've heard me say this many times. It's in probably all of my books. And I have said this to many people in some form or fashion and not in a mean or negative way, but just, again, you don't have to say the thing in order to embody it and express it. So you have to teach people how to treat you. So when people come to me with, oh my gosh, I need you to answer the phone right now. Why aren't you answering the phone? This is an emergency. Your lack of planning is actually not my emergency. A lot of people like to bring you into their confusion and chaos, much of which was self-inflicted. So when they're not staying on top of their calendar, when they're not staying on top of their finances, when they're not aware of their needs, wants and desires and how to organize and prioritize their life, they want to suck you into their chaos. And this is why most of us can not complete our own vision, because we're constantly getting sucked into what other people deem to be an emergency. But most of it could have been prevented. It could have been avoided had they planned appropriately, not my business. So you have to recognize the importance of your time and energy. So when you're saying no, you're preserving resources for things that truly matter to you. At this stage in the game for me, I just frame it as a positive choice for self-care. I truly value peace. So I am really orienting my life around peace, not chaos not trauma, not drama, not all kind of extra stuff. And some of that is people who like to bring you their emergency, they don't have a value for peace. They thrive in drama. They believe they're thriving in chaos. You might be that person, but ultimately, is it even getting you to the thing that you say you desire? Probably not. So what I do instead is I might suggest alternatives. I might compromise depending on who it is and what the request is. Because I want to show, depending on who it is and what it is, I have a willingness to help, but it has to be in a way that fits into 
my schedule, my priorities, and my life at the moment. I just don't feel compelled for most things to be sucked into people's emergencies because while some things are important, they're not necessarily urgent. And people have a tendency to want everything to be so urgent. And really it's not. (laughs) And you have to trust yourself to discern, right? The beauty of all of this is you can be flexible to a degree because this is your life. But for me, I've just learned to have certain parameters around that. But, you know, sometimes when people are trying to blow my phone up, depending on what I have going on, what I'm doing, when I decide to reply, I may just reply with a simple text. Like, hey, what's up? What's going on? How can I support you? And then they'll text the thing and it's like, well, that could have been a text message to begin with. You didn't need to call me six times in a row. I'm just talking about my family. I don't know about yours, right? You don't really need to call me six times in a row. You could have just said that in a text. But see, what people like to do is get you on the phone, take up 20 minutes, enroll you in their drama. When really, if you just want to borrow a few hundred dollars, just say that. You could have texted me and I could have zelled you by now. But what you won't do is take up all my time with a bunch of story. I don't really need the story. That's me personally. You have to decide what that feels like for you. I don't know about you, but when I do get the bug to get my hands a little dirty in the kitchen, I'm still not inspired to spend lots of time and energy on searching for recipes or walking through a freezing grocery store. Just not my thing. So I get quick, convenient recipes delivered right to me. I just choose my meals and select a delivery day and HelloFresh handles the meal planning and shopping. All I have to do is open the weekly box of pre-portioned farm fresh ingredients with the step-by-step recipes that do have pictures to get cooking with less hassle and less wasted food. And let me tell you, if you're a pescatarian like me, I love that when they say pescatarian, it's not just salmon over and over again. No shade to salmon, but come on, you guys. At this point, I've tried Parmesan crusted trout, Baja fish tacos. I even had pan seared scallops with lemon butter. Oh my gosh, so good. Whatever your dietary preference is, if your goal this year is to save money, eat better, stress less, or just try something new, HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit, has got your back. Go to HelloFresh.com slash RWFree and use my code RWFree for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash RWFree with the code RWFree. So here's what I've been telling anyone who says they're ready to reduce stress, eat well, devote time to their loved ones, step into purpose powerfully, and save money. You need to try Factor. Forget resolutions, get results, and trade in the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue so you have more time during the week to focus on your purpose. You can get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door with Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery service. With over 35 meals to choose from every week, I personally choose Calorie Smart and the vegan and veggie meals. Plus, I love their smoothies after a workout from their over 55 weekly add-ons. This year, let's skip the overpriced takeout trap. We've done enough of that because Factor is cheaper and way more delicious. Think restaurant quality delivered right to your doorstep. And they're ready to heat and eat in just two minutes? Head to factormeals.com slash RW50 and use my code RW50 to get 50% off. That's code RW50 at factormills.com slash RW50 to get your 50% off. The biggest winner in the big game could be you, thanks to BetMGM. The king of sportsbooks is offering new customers a chance to score $158 in bonus bets instantly. That's right, instantly. Just download the BetMGM app and sign up using bonus code VEGAS58. Then place a $5 money line wager on the big game you'll receive $158 in bonus bets instantly, regardless of your wager's outcome. Don't miss your opportunity to cross the goal line on the money line as pro football's top teams clash for the championship. Can't be in Vegas for the big game? Then bring the big game excitement to you with the king of sportsbooks. BetMGM and GameSense reminds you to play responsibly. 21 plus and present in Ohio. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. That's 1-800-GAMBLER. In partnership with MGM Northfield Park.
Are you ready for Redefining Wealth Live 2024? I hope so, because we already have everything locked in and all we need is you, October 11th through 13th in Atlanta, Georgia. Do not miss this. Right now we have early bird tickets on sale. You know you want to come, so you might as well lock in that ticket right now. Click the link below or go to redefiningwealthlive.com to secure your seat today. Another shift that I've had to make over the years is I've become more unapologetic about my no is just detaching from the response of others. Many times we don't say no because we're afraid of someone furrowing their brow. We are afraid of the silence on the other end of the phone. We are afraid when we don't get the instant email response back that it's okay. You cannot be attached to the response of others. You have to be committed to staying true to yourself and honoring what you need to do in this season. And if you don't have the bandwidth, do not make it bad, right? No matter how they look, no matter what they do with their brow. I don't care about a scowl. I don't care about a brow. (laughs) I don't care about awkward silence. I don't care about any of that. Now, this is a muscle I've had to build. It's a muscle I've had to build, but trust me, you can do it. You have to understand, again, people have been so accustomed to your yes because you've been people pleasing. You've been saying yes with no regard for yourself, for your dreams, for your values. You're just saying yes to get their agreement, to get their love, to get their respect. And in many cases, they don't even have the respect and love that you think they do for you. So it's not even working because you'll never say enough yeses to please them. You can give them 99 yeses. And the minute you say no, you're a bad person, you're a problem, all this stuff. And that's okay. Now, let me say this. A lot of times you're going to detach from the response and say no, and you're going to be pleasantly surprised that you will receive a, okay. A lot of what we're attached to are stories that we've made up in our mind. We have created a plethora of stories about how people are not going to like us, how they're going to be mean to us, how they're going to think that we think we're better than them, how they're going to never ask us again. We have all of these things in our minds. And the reality is more people can handle your no than you believe, especially when you say it and leave them with their dignity, especially when you say it and maybe give them an alternative that might be supportive to them. But we make up the story And we get so attached to the idea that they're going to be upset and mad at us and all of those things. What if you just started to envision people having a different response? What if you started to envision them saying thank you? Because guess what? A lot of people would prefer that you be a cheerful giver. Sometimes we're saying yes out of this feeling of obligation and we're not even cheerful. We're not even doing it from a happy place, from a like a good spirited place. We're just doing it. And then we're not even giving it our all. So we might as well just say no and allow them to get someone in that place or position that can do it with a cheerful yes, right? So we have to learn to detach from the response of others. Some people may initially be disappointed or surprised, but that shouldn't sway your standard for your life. Anyone's annoyance with my no, I have come to believe is not my business, Anyone's annoyance with my no is not my business because I've also learned that people will ask a question and expect your yes before you've even given consent. And that's what they're upset about. So people ask you a yes or no question. They have an expectation and an attachment to your yes. And the minute you say no and don't meet their expectation, that's where they become upset. And you have to ask yourself, why would you assume my yes Why did you even ask me? What you really did was want to force me into it, (laughs) right? You want to back me into a corner. So if I ask someone a yes or no question, what would I love? Like I ask people now, I am so big on asking for the support that I need. That was not a strong suit in my life many years ago. But over these last 15 years or so, man, have I learned how to ask for support. And I learned more and more every day, every week, every month. And what I will say is, as someone who has a good sense of my boundaries and enforcing them and I have standards for my life, when other people say no to me, I literally have no attachment to it. 
I don't make them wrong. I don't curse them out. I'm not upset with them. That doesn't mean I'll never ask them again. I'm not mad. It's none of those things. People who look at life through the lens of abundance and people who have strong standards for themselves are not upset when other people enforce their boundaries. I don't make anyone enforcing boundaries about me personally. I respect them even more when they say that doesn't fit or I'm already committed to something or this is not the right season. I love that about my community. So, so often you'll see in my programs that a lot of our alumni come back as ambassadors or coaches in some form or fashion to support the next cohort or the next iteration of the program. And you have people who come back over and over again. And then there's some seasons where they're like, hey, I can't do it in this season. And we're like, cool, no problem. We'll move on. Because when we ask, we don't ask with the expectation that they are going to say yes. And really, I love to see my clients continue to evolve and their own coaching practices blossom and their own media and speaking opportunities blossom to a point where they can't come back. That's the goal. (laughs) That's the dream. That's the vision. I love seeing my clients evolve to that place. So when we're saying, hey, Tanya, can you come back and support as a pillar ambassador? She says, oh, I am booked and busy this season and I can't. I don't do what some coaches I've heard do this go, oh, so now you think you're too good for us? No. I'm like, I know that's right, girl. You better go with your best self because she came through command the stage. She came through purpose to platform. She came through mastery and momentum. She better be out there doing the thing. That's my expectation of her is that she take everything that she's learned in my programs under my coaching and she be out there flourishing. If you are ever working with a mentor, a coach, a pastor, anybody who gets upset when you have taken the things that they were supposed to be teaching you and now you don't have time to come and serve in the same way under them, you better pay attention to their response to your no, because that says a lot. There are some people who are only rooting for you until they feel like you might surpass them. This is like a whole side sermon. But if you end up saying no and that's a problem, you better pay attention attention, because that says a lot. So back to my original point, (laughs) detach from the response of others. Hey, podcast family, big news. I've just launched a game-changing app designed exclusively for you. It is officially the Redefining Wealth app with Patrice Washington. Now all of my courses, coaching, live streams, and most importantly, my community are just a tap away all under one roof. You can download the app now for seamless access to exclusive content and a vibrant community of purpose chasers from all over the world. This is the ultimate hub for all things Patrice Washington and all things Redefining Wealth. You can search for it in your app store or find the link at redefiningwealth.app. That's redefiningwealth.app. Do not miss out. Your journey to redefining wealth just got a whole lot easier. Download the app today and let's take this adventure of redefining wealth for ourselves to the next level together. And number five, here's another, my last point. Write a script and practice saying no. This is why I'm doing the bonus session in the Institute to give a few of my scripts, help you develop your own, and then have a place for you to practice saying no. Why would you have an expectation of yourself to be able to say no powerfully when you haven't practiced? You have been in the practice for the last 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, giving everybody a yes, even against your own will, even against your own values, even against your own dreams, goals, ambitions, and motivations. You've said yes to everyone else. And you think that by just listening to a podcast or reading a meme on Instagram, all of a sudden you're going to change? No, it's an an unfair expectation of yourself to believe that it just happens overnight. I can speak with conviction because I've been practicing this for 10 years at least. So I today can speak with conviction and I want to see you be able to get to your no sooner, quicker, faster, but it only comes with practice. 
So you want to role play. You want to practice saying no with a friend. You want to practice in a mirror. The more you practice, the more comfortable and confident you'll become. One of our most noted exercises at Redefining Wealth Live 2023 um, was an exercise around role playing. It was beautiful. It was beautiful to see people. There were so many breakthroughs because people had never given voice to what they really wanted to say to some of the people in their lives where they had committed to these silent agreements that say, when you ask, I will jump. When you say something, I will do it. I will not question. I will not counter. I will not compromise with you. I just do whatever you say. And people shared that they have been in these types of silent agreements and relationships, partnerships, friendships for months, for years, and for some people, decades, where they were not being honored, they were not being respected, they had no boundaries, they had no standards for how they wanted to be treated or loved or spoken to, nothing. It was one of the most powerful exercises, and it's why I can't wait to do a virtual version of that in the Institute. So I really hope this serves you. So to do a recap really quickly, number one, saying no is not mean unless you say it meanly. You can say no and leave people with their dignity. Number two, your own limits and priorities matter just as much as the next person. Number three, someone else's lack of planning is not your emergency. You have to value your time and energy just as much as the next person. Number four, detach from the responses of others. We are not moved by a scowl or a furrowed brow. And number five, write a script and practice saying no. You have to remember that saying no is a skill that only improves with practice. I hope that this really serves you because I want you to definitely learn how to say no without feeling guilty in this season so you can say yes to the vision on your heart and so you can say yes to redefining wealth for yourself. Remember, you can pick up a copy of our Stop People Pleasing Guide in the Redefining Wealth app. It's totally free for our community and I only consider you to be officially be a part of the Redefining Wealth community if you are in the app. This is where I can speak to you directly and get you all the resources. And I don't have to compete with all of the noise on all of these platforms because, baby, it's just a lot of foolishness out there. And I don't want to be in it because I do value peace and I find peace in the Redefining Wealth app. And it's so cool to get to know so many of you and what you're working on, what you're doing. It's just a blessing. And then, of course, if you are In the Redefining Wealth Institute, our bonus session is on February 22nd. So make sure you come in and RSVP. We're going to practice on how to say no with scripts and then uh, pairing up with folks so that you can um, really give voice to what has not been working, what's not been serving you, some of those silent agreements you need to get rid of. And I think I'm also going to do a little bonus worksheet for everyone in there. So If you're not in the Institute, please come on in. What are you waiting for? You can try us out. I say give us at minimum 12 months. I'm really, really excited about everything we're up to in the Institute. And I just keep adding things to make sure that you are covered every month. I'm going to have different exciting things for you. So come on in. It's redefiningwealth.institute. So I hope that's a blessing to you. Until next time, I want you to go live your life's purpose, find fulfillment, and earn more without ever chasing money. I'll talk to you later. Hi, I'm Keith. And I'm Jeremy. We are Buckeye Express Logistics Services in Columbus. Our customers love to share how we deliver for them. Hi, I'm Parnelli Skaggs, and I'm in the automotive industry. I need parts delivered on time. I work with Buckeye Express Logistics Services because they deliver 100%. Buckeye stepped in and made me look good and saved me over $80,000 a year on transportation costs. We We are are Buckeye Buckeye Express Express Logistics Logistics Services. Services. 614 272-6730 or online at BuckeyeExpressLogistics.com.